Hello everyone! Welcome back to another video on historical knitting. This time, I'm going to be taking you through the process of knitting some Victorian underwear, or Victorian combinations. As you might have seen in my last video, I have a lot of historical knitting planned because I would like to make an 1890s Victorian outfit where most of the pieces are made by hand, and hopefully most of the pieces are made by hand from the 1892 book The Art of Knitting. In the previous video, I showed you all of the different layers that I'm going to be making, and I've already made the stockings. So the next piece that I need to make now is the Victorian underwear, or the Victorian combinations. I'm knitting combinations because it was the one set of underwear instructions that I could find for which there are actual historical examples of people owning knit underwear or knit combinations. And I can show you a few of those now, like the knit set from the Met, uh, collection. There are also some examples from the 1800s, um, specifically I think late 1800s on Etsy for knit combinations. I don't believe any of these are actually hand knit, but they do give a good suggestion that people did actually wear and produce knit combinations in the 1890s time frame. As you can see, I'll put the pattern up, there are no pictures for this particular set of instructions. Um, and I don't really know much about combination construction itself. So I went looking in other sources to see if I could find some examples of knit combinations with the finished pictures part of the instructions. And I did manage to find one. And from trying to interpret a little bit of what the instructions say in the art of knitting versus what this picture shows, I think it's actually quite close to what I'm expecting to produce at the end. The next part of my journey is to basically go look at the pattern and try to interpret what it says. I'll warn you ahead of time, I find it to be pretty confusing and I did sit down with Excel spreadsheets and drawings and um, you know my <laughs> my different graphing paper to try to map out exactly what I'm going to be knitting because it is quite difficult for me to understand what it says. It doesn't help that it is basically one ginormous set of instructions in maybe three or four paragraphs with no real break up of the instructions itself. So I had a really hard time trying to form an image in my head of what it means. What doesn't help is the fact that after trying to do the math multiple different ways, trying to knit some samplers, there's definitely some error in stitch counts and what they say. And there's also, they begin the set of instructions with two different size options, but don't continue with them. And I can't tell exactly which set of size instructions the rest of the pattern continues with. So there's definitely some room that I interpreted with for this pattern based on the pictures that I found and the picture of the other knitting pattern that I found. Though I, did, I didn't find the knitting instructions, just the picture of the finished product. Um, one other thing that ended up clearing things up quite well for me is the fact that underwear of the time, especially ones with legs, had to have an open seam at the crotch because the ladies couldn't take things off. There were too many layers and it was a bit too difficult. So you needed to be able to use the restroom without taking off the pants themselves. Yeah, this was a very involved project. It took me months to complete, um, but I am really excited to share with you all my construction progress and also the ups and downs of the progress. I'm talking to you after having completed the combination, so I know everything that went into it and I know that you guys are gonna see some ups and downs throughout the entire design. So wish past me luck as I go through actually knitting these Victorian combinations. For this project, I use Knit Picks Alpaca Cloud in the colorway Sophia. It's a 100% baby alpaca lace weight yarn that's super soft and really squishy. Using a set of double pointed needles, I cast on 100 stitches. The pattern does say that you can cast on either 90 or 100, but I decided to go for the nice round number of 100 stitches. The pattern starts by working from the bottom up, so I'm actually starting at the cuff of one of the legs. Here you can see that I've completed 4 inches of 2x2 two two ribbing as the pattern calls for. After finishing the ribbing, I knit in the round, increasing on the inside of the thigh in order to make space for my thighs. At this point, I've reached the top of my leg and it's time to actually start purling back instead of continuing to work in the round. 
This will create that opening at the crotch that I talked about before that will allow you to use the restroom without actually taking off the combinations all the way. I continued knitting back and forth until the opening was exactly the length that I needed. At this point, I was done with one leg. And you can see that one side of the opening is actually wider than the other side of the opening. I've completed one leg and I did the exact same thing for the other leg except the opposite side was wider than the other one. It's time to join your two legs together and I ended up joining the wider sides of the opening together which I realized much too late that this is actually the wrong side to join together but that's okay, it ended up working out alright anyway. A bit disheartening is working for so long and getting this far and realizing that I'd only made it this far in the instructions and I still had most of the rest of the instructions left to go. I had however made pretty good progress knitting back and forth after joining the legs together and knitting stitches together in the front to create some shaping up to the waist. After completing this initial shaping, the pattern suggests that you continue decreasing at the front center seam and the two side seams, and I placed some markers to make it a little bit easier for me to remember. Of course my dog is always close to me when I'm knitting, and here you can see her pretty close to me as I make some progress on the length of these combinations. It might not be easy to tell, but at this point I'm still knitting straight across, and I'm adding some length in preparation to begin knitting in the round again. Once I had enough knit material to begin knitting in the round again, I followed the instructions on overlapping the two ends in order to create a flap in the back. The instructions did say to only overlap 10 or 20 stitches, but I ended up doing many more in order to uh, better match my own measurements. Creating the flap at the back was as simple, or not so simple, as knitting both stitches at the same time. I had some difficulty sometimes in grabbing onto the tiny stitches on my metal circular needles, but it ended up working out pretty well and I was pretty pleased with how the back overlap turned out. The next part of the knitting instructions say to knit around for 4 inches taking into account some of the shaping stitches here where I did some decreases around where I had left my markers. Unfortunately, after doing the waist shaping and up to working on the front flaps, I lost quite a bit of footage. I wish I would have been able to show you how I did the shaping for the bust and the sleeves and the neckline, but you might get some information from this stop motion animation that I did and had fun with on the other side of the front flap. What really excited me about the bust shaping is that it reminded me very much of the extant example that I saw on Etsy for knit underwear. At this point, I was really excited to try on the combinations because it felt like I was getting pretty close to finishing. Both front flaps with their pretty complicated shaping pieces were complete and all that was left for me to do was really knit up the back and do some finishing details. Or so I thought. After deciphering the pretty intense instructions for the somewhat fiddly front panels, knitting up the back felt like a breeze. Here you can see I reached the point for creating the shoulder straps, which I should have knit longer, but I was just very excited to finally reach a point where I felt like I was done or almost done with the combinations. And here you can see me finishing sewing together the front and back flaps shoulder straps. <laughs> Say that five times fast. <laughs> All that was left at this point was to add the sleeves and some stitches across the front opening to make it as wide as I needed. You can see here that I decided to create some short rib stitches and then I picked up the stitches down the front opening on one side and decided to create a garter filler stitch. Before I finished knitting the front closed, I decided to try it on to see what I thought about the sleeves and the garter stitch. And it turns out that I did not like it at all. First of all, the sleeves were much too short and kept on bunching up. So those had to be redone. Unfortunately, I couldn't undo the yarn because I had already cast off and it's quite a fuzzy yarn so it kept on knotting up so I ended up having to just cut the sleeves off, which is probably one of the most painful parts of this project, and watching this back just hurts. 
I decided instead to make rib sleeves that were longer and fit closer to my arm and put ribbing down both sides of the front opening. This was a much happier fitting and don't worry I'm wearing some clothes underneath the combinations because they are a bit see-through but I'm so much happier with the new sleeves and the new rib stitch down the front opening. The pattern suggests just using a button to close off the top of the combinations but I decided instead to put in a crocheted border like the illustration did in the example that I found and to use a ribbon through that crocheted border to then tie the combinations shut at the front. And there you have it. After many weeks of work and rework and calculations, I finished my Victorian combinations. I'm incredibly happy with the fit and the feel and the look of these combinations. The baby alpaca is super soft. I did end up blocking the piece a bit to stretch the midsection to fit me better, but I'm very happy with how this turned out. While the crocheted edge trimming isn't part of the original pattern, it makes me really happy every time I put these combinations on to tie the ribbon up at the top. You can also see that in order to make the sleeves tight fitting, I used the decreases that I learned while knitting my stockings. For those that are curious, I used the book The Art of Crochet as inspiration for the top crocheted edge. At this point, I'm actually completely finished with the first layer of my 1892 outfit, and I can put on my combinations and then my stockings, which I had finished previously. Thank you everyone so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, you can give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel, and you'll see things like the corset and bustle pad, which I'll go over next time. Bye! Thank you.